Hello and thank you for following us and let's keep working with this tutorial case uh, mixing elbow so so far this is the geometry that we have we already modeled that we saw that in the previous tutorial so we create geometry dimension and we run the simple simulation now let's do something a little bit more complicated going to advanced physics or models so let's say that in this case we're going to to have same boundary condition but we would like to implement in this scene that we would like to add a passive scatter here and here okay so that passive scatter can be seen as a temperature so maybe you can say it's incompressible so density viscosity won't change or you can say as that it represents concentration something that is moving with your fluid and maybe in one point we can add a uh, source and when those two scalars mix together they can react like for instance following wind uh, renews or uh, reaction uh, creation so maybe if we have time we can do a little bit more of that program a little bit but let me show you how to add this one so in previous versions open for all ones i have to say to add a passive scatter basically you needed to to to, to modify the solver whatever you were using to add the small equation now in the newest version you you have what is called pluggable solvers that they are really handy so you don't need to program anymore in open fun to, to add those passive scatter so here you, you have your case I already rerun the simulation in parallel let it run for a, a long time but I would show you that in the folder you can you, you, you can download the case and you will have the user folder the only difference that to add this pluggable solver that you can hear in the control dictionary and we have the standard control dictionary nothing new here we have all the functions objects so we start to see here that as the physics that we're going to to, to model and maybe we're, we will interest it for instance in optimizing later this elbow so for instance i would like to move this small pipe in order to have the best mixing and i can measure what quantity here so since that i can access maybe the api in in your own shape and modify that and do all those calling those are uh, more advanced features but it can be done so but in this case look at that uh, I, I started to add a lot of function object i'm measuring my mass flow and the inlets okay inlet one two all this so remember it's not only about getting those colors and then open part of it, it's just you need the physical quantity so uh remember the method is fully conservative so what is going in is going out unless you have some sources somewhere but in this case we do have sources then we're measuring another quantity here so for instance i'm doing a weighted average in the patches so i would like to compute this quantity there patch one and two and maybe i can use the, 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 the that information to do something else then in maximum values in the patches as well and the outlet also want to compute the maximum value so for instance we're going to add new two equations and i what i would like to see the concentration of those scalar okay those new equations that we're going to add kind of will represent uh, concentration and this is the part where we add those those new equations so you give a name to your function object this part is pretty much standard you need to change sense and just copy and paste Okay, then you choose the saving frequency and then this will show information on the screen. So here you set up your passive scatter. So you give it a name. So I'm calling the, the quantity that is going to enter. I'm calling that as once you want to call it T. You just put T the name that you want to put there. You give a diffusion coefficient. Okay, I'm giving a diffusion coefficient here. And then also I'm defining the number of correction. Remember, this is a new equation. We have this to, to access this information as with the piece of, piece of pressure velocity coupling. In this case, we, we do one correction. And then we define a second scalar pretty much the same and see that your coefficients and corrections and everything can be different so in this case I can as two different diffusion coefficients and look at that you have this option here so it's the one you can use the same scheme that you are using for velocity but also but you can define independent numerical schemes so as you see we're adding plugging this new equation in the solver so we need to 
go and take a look at SVSkin and SVSolution. So see that in SVSkins, we need to tell how to solve those two new equations. So for phi S1, we use linear wing, grad S1, you define your gradient. So as you see, you can have different discretization scheme. You can do all as you like. So probably these are concentrations, so maybe they are very bounded quantities. So it would be better to use the TVD scheme like Mint Mode or Van Leer. It's up to you, just play around. And then as the solution, same stuff, you need to define how to solve those new variables. So that will be an asymmetric uh, in a system that you will assemble there and then you define here how to solve that. So that's all, okay? Then we go to constant, nothing new. So we already defining the transport properties directly in the function object, but this one also can be defined here. I, pre I prefer to do it directly on the in the function object. And then as you go to see that where you have your boundary conditions, you see that besides U and P and you are modeling also turbulence, you will have K omega or whatever you are using, etc. So here you have the new two variables that were declared. So as you remember in the control dictionary we create S1, S2. Those are the new fields. So basically there are dimensionless and as usual we have seen how to define this boundary condition. So we here take the values, zero gradient, and then in inlet one, you will have concentration one of this one, as one, and in inlet two, we're going to have the concentrations, this one, okay? And again, this is one, later we're going to, to do another fast uh, tutorial, just the last one, the very last one, I hope, so, just to program and call the string here. So, for instance, we can program a probability profile directly in this dictionary. So, that is really handy. Instead of creating your own library or modifying the software like it used to be before to add this, this, this function, you can program directly in this dictionary. So, here we can substitute this boundary condition with something else and we can implement whatever you want. So, that's all we have. We you find your boundary conditions and then you just can run your case in the usual in the usual way. So here I would run just a few steps. So I would go the usual remember always check the mesh quality but already know we know that we have get mesh so you go check mesh. Something that is also really important you can use the renumber mesh utility. So this one will make your matrices more diagonal so your solvers Will run will run faster, so I highly recommend you to do this one if you have large meshes. Now, if you have small meshes, doesn't make any sense. You you don't get any speed up, but doesn't hurt. So I will use renumber mesh. I know that in this case I will see a, a speed speed up, a speed up, and then I can run this simulation. So I don't recall what it was using. So I think it was. I know Ecofon, so I will type Ecofon and let's run. So, as you see, all the quantities are being computed, and as you take a look at here, now we're solving the new equations. Okay, will be the next one. Okay, so the equations are solved at the end of the loop the velocity so you have is one is two and then all your functions objects are being computed while simulation is running. So this simulation let run a little bit because I was interested now to, to, to look at how everything is mixed. I already have here some results. So for instance I can show you how was my my mo I was monitoring the residuals so let's just look at that continuity, small values, so remember continuity, this con continuity server can be small or, or positive or negative, but they need to be small, so here are small values, and then check your, here you have your residual for the quantity, so you see, well, the new equations are also being monitored, and uh, as you can see, it's kind of a, after a while, you get kind of a steady behavior, okay? So, let's take a look at this one, so let me stop this one, I don't need it to run anymore. So it's running in the usual way, nothing new there. So I already prepared that one. I run in parallel, so remember, if you want to access the parallel solution, you can, you have to access, you can re reconstruct everything, but 
is you have the big case that can be very tank consuming. So what we do is parallel and we use this action built in that it will let you access the parallel case. So here you choose the compose case, apply, and then we access our solution. And this is what we have. And let me go to the latest time. Okay. And this is what we have. We have P there, velocity at the walls. We see nothing, okay? Because boundary But look at here what we have at the end. So previously, I uh, we were modeling with using that constant velocity. And look at that here, we have a parabolic profile. To get those parabolic profile, you can program that. But also what you can do is to use pressure uh, boundary condition. So when you impose pressure, you let the velocity evolve in a natural way. So it's a better way. It's better. It's better to use the unifer. But it's up to you. Okay. So you, if if it is okay for you, the uniform velocity, just put it there. But if you want to have natural profile, it's better to use pressure boundary conditions or to use to impose pressure or to use mass flow. Okay. Pressure and mass flow what will let you. We let the profile the profile evolve in a natural way. Okay, so this is another difference that we have in this case where we're using that natural profile. And then if I put a cut plane there, we can take a look. Uh, we have the so this is your profile entering after 20 seconds, and then we can also track those scatter. So see that we have S1, S2 there, and and one point we can measure how how they are mixing so the post processing here can be a little bit heavy so I already have an estate here so as you're going to fix so I will open this one I will choose again I need to choose the specific form file and then I have a predefined state state and for instance, let's see the animations, this one, so this is velocity. Okay, so we have a very uh, slow transient at the beginning, but then everything will stabilize. Here, as you will see, this boundary condition, we, we're going to have some velocity coming back and some strange interaction here, but after a while, everything will, will stabilize. So at the beginning it's a little bit tricky. You will need to stabilize the simulation by reducing tides or using very uh, stable uh, non oscillatory uh, numerical methods. So, so already the dictionary is pretty set up, so you won't have any problem. So for instance, what I was telling you that uh, I can, for instance, measure the quantity, I think. Okay, so I have the patch in the outlet and I can say latest time and for here that kind of we have the concentration in the outlet so remember that in the boundary conditions I, I gave the scalar one was defined like uh, the inlet was one and scalar two was two so if I do the summation of those I can get kind of how, how they are mixing so see that here that probably here we'll have more in scalar 2 and then here is scalar 1 so for instance you can do the actual optimization of this case so you can use this criteria to have a uniform uniformity in the outlet so probably this is not a very good case so kind of we already know that probably if we move this small pipe here a little bit here backward probably we're going to to to, to get a better case so maybe probably yes if we feel up I can set up this when using I can we can set up the, the optimization case just using uncheck the API the code and then run these simulations that are relative fast simulations. Uh, what else we have here? Okay, okay, so also we have this okay they have the threshold quantities here. Okay, so probably here we can see better how everything is mixing so see that after 20 seconds, here you will have concentrations. This is color, and then also after 20 seconds in all this area, you will have the concentrations. The second is color, and then probably there will be some mixing between them and some velocity vectors. Oh, everything is going on. So, 
here I prepare everything, so there are many many operations that I did here to 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 help this. This view, okay. So I think pretty much this was all the case. Just run it, then play along with the post processing. This is a nice case to learn a little bit you no know, more complex post processing. That can be very complex according to to, to what you do you want to to do. So for instance, let's take a look here in this plane. Probably yes, I think uh, we have this plane here. Yeah. Okay. Here I have access to the two scalars, so I create an operation called the scalars. That is, as you see here in the calculator, S1 plus S2. So here we can track what is going on. So let's play this. So it will be a little bit slow. So as you see here, the scalar one is antenna. Okay, and then we have a scalar two here. So they have different uh, the dynamics, remember different velocities. So this one's moving much, much, much faster. And then at one point you will have this one, scalar one region two, and then we're going to have the mixes. But look at that, we have this natural parabolic profile. If you do the simulation using the uniform, uniform velocity profile, you will have kind of a similar, uh, different, uh, profile here but pretty much the results will be kind of very similar. Okay, let me put time, I forget. So but I let it run twenty seconds. As you see you need to, to let it run a while to, to, to get a good view of the dynamics. So at this point, at the hour that you start to measure, you will see that you only have scalar 1 concentration. But then in time, that concentration will start to increase and you will have both scalars there. So, okay, let me go to time 100, no, 150. Okay, uh, there. Okay, so as you see here, it's the scalar one already reached the outlet, and then there's mixing with this one. And at this point, all the mixing will start to happen. So it's not the best way to, to mix. So to increase that one, maybe you will need to add an internal wall here just to increase, like a spiral, just to increase the mixing, or you can have an impeller. There are many ways to many things to do. And also, the simulations can be really crazy. So you can say, you can create also chemical reactions here, as I mentioned previously, so the Arrhenius equation, and then when these two enters in contact, one will start to produce a source or produce something else. So this is it. This was this simulation. You have the case ready to go. You can play with those scalars. Remember, you can add more scalars if you, if you want. If you want, also, you can add the solster here. So here we add those scalars in the patches. But you can do also topological selections and select a group of cells and then inject the scalar from there. And you can see how it is transported. So I think that is all for this case. Or you you like it and if we have time probably we're going to do pretty much the same but I'm going to show you how to impose the, the parabolic profile using the cold steel actions and maybe also we show you how to to add that that source inside by selecting cells using the top of set uh, utility. Thank you very much and see you next time.